Start off the basketball. Uh, tough, rugged, uh, hard nose. Uh, it's just about guys going out and, and giving a hundred percent and never quitting. Well, I'm looking forward to playing against Hank and Bo tonight. It's you know, it gives me a chance to go against them in a more competitive atmosphere. Whereas, you know, when we played against them in high school, they really had the upper hand. They had a dominant team, and they just blew us away. And it's the first time that I really get the chance to go against them. It's a rivalry because I'm sure Lionel and Doug wants to, you know, beat us really bad. And we've been talking about it all summer, joking about it. And, uh, you know, this, it'll be a, a rivalry, a game that we want to win so we can have the bragging rights. I'm kind of courting them in between because uh, I'm good friends with all three of them. And I don't want to say who's the flat out, who's the best player, because I might get killed by either one of them. It's a high school reunion of sorts tonight at the Philadelphia Civic Center as Loyola Marymount at 8-3 takes on LaSalle. The Explorers, one of only seven undefeated teams in the nation at the moment in Division I at 8-0. Good evening, everybody, and welcome. Sean McDonough along with Larry Connolly. We're delighted to have you with us tonight. Larry, it is a homecoming for Bo Kimball and Hank Gathers of Loyola Marymount. That homecoming really began on Thursday night when Loyola Marymount took on St. Joseph's across town. What a ball game for Bo Kimball. Oh, it really was. They win by three on this school record shot right here. He gets 54 points, and that wins the game at St. Joseph's. He's an absolutely great player. You can see the celebration. And he only slightly improved his scoring average for the season. Kimball leads the nation in scoring at just less than 38 points per game. Last year, Hank Gathers of Loyola led the nation in scoring. As you probably recall, about a month ago, he collapsed during a game on the foul line. He's played three games since returning now, but he hasn't been the same. Well, that's right. It, it happened on December the 9th, and he's really the player they go to on the inside. If you have to have a physical presence and some power inside, it's got to come from Hank Gathers. They hope he's back and healthy tonight. Meanwhile, the Explorers of LaSalle led into action tonight by their All-American, the L-Train, Lytle Simmons. Well, he's having a decent year. Not as good as he had last year, but he's one of those players that will give it to you inside and outside. He's a great shooter. We have so many NBA scouts to look at the numbers that Lionel Simmons puts up on the board tonight. We're going to have a high-scoring affair, I feel sure. You know, Loyola wants to run and score. Coach Speedy Morris of LaSalle says his Explorers won't try to slow the game down. Now back to the studios with Chris Fowler. Okay, thank you, Sean. So all those old friendships renewed tonight. And Paul Westhead's not dumb. He knows with his Philadelphia connections, you keep coming back home if you keep recruiting those Philadelphia guys. Reminder, our second game this evening, Utah and Hawaii at midnight Eastern time. The Rainbow Warriors off to a nice start after the big turnaround last year. Now, at halftime, we'll have highlights of Illinois, Minnesota, the only other game between top 25 teams tonight. And also, we'll keep you apprised of the Jerry Glanville situation. Press conference taking place down in Houston. We'll tell you what happened. In the meantime, enjoy the first half. We're going back to the Civic Center in just a minute. You're in, you're in good, you're in good company. You're in, you've got respect and real opportunity. Now you can prove yourself, you're in. nobody here will stand in your way. In the U.S. Armed Forces, everyone has a chance to learn, to grow, to lead. Opportunity is waiting for you, for you, for you, in the U.S. Armed Forces. Trofeo, trofeo. It's a new generation and we want a new world. Sequential port, fuel injection, anti-lock brakes. It is come and we want a new world. Visual information center handles great. This Oldsmobile is not our father's new generation for the sons and daughters. Trofeo. This is the new generation of Oldsmobile. Save your dough. For a limited time, Domino's Pizza has a New Year's deal. Two pizzas each with one topping for only $10.95. You can't get this deal just anywhere, so why go anywhere? 
call Domino's Pizza on the double. We'll be there in 30 minutes or less, hot and fresh. Two pizzas for $10.95. Call Domino's Pizza. Nobody delivers better. Nobody, 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 nobody. Offer may vary. It began as a game. It turned into a battle. And now, it's out of control. Bud Bowl 2. Coming January 28th. This time, it's war. ESPN's NCAA Basketball, Loyola Marymount at LaSalle is brought to you by the new generation of Oldsmobile. Step into the future now with your Oldsmobile dealer. By the U.S. Armed Forces, where opportunity is waiting for you. And by Domino's Pizza Incorporated. Hot, fresh, delicious pizza. Domino's Pizza. Nobody delivers better. Back at the Philadelphia Civic Center and ready for the starting lineups for Loyola Marymount and LaSalle. Let's go to public address announcer John McAdams. I got him. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Philadelphia Civic Center. This evening, LaSalle University presents the Loyola Marymount University Lions and the LaSalle University Explorers. Let's meet the starting lineups. First for Loyola Marymount. At a forward position, the junior, six feet, seven inches tall, from Sodentalia, Sweden, number four, Pear Steamer. At the other forward, a senior, six feet, five inches tall, from Philadelphia, number 30, Bo Kimball. At the center spot, a senior, also from Philadelphia, six feet, seven inches tall, number 44, Hank Gathers. At the guards, a junior, six feet, one inch, from Riverside, California, number 12, Tony Walker. And at the other guard, a senior, six feet, two inches tall, from Newport Beach, California, number 21, Jeff Breyer. The head coach of the Loyola Marymount Lions in his fifth season is Paul Westhead. And for the LaSalle University Explorers, At a forward position, a senior, six feet, seven inches tall, from Philadelphia, number 22, Lionel Simmons. At the other forward, a sophomore, six feet, six inches tall, from Linux, Pennsylvania, number 25, Jack Hurd. At the center spot, a sophomore, six feet, nine inches tall, from Amsterdam, the Netherlands, number 44, Milko Levers. The guards, a junior, six feet, three inches tall, from Philadelphia, number 11, Doug Overton. Now the other guard, a sophomore, six feet tall, from Philadelphia, number 14, Randy Woods. The head coach of the LaSalle University Explorers in this fourth season is Bill Speedy Morris. The officials for this evening's game. Before John tonight's Corio. game, we asked Speedy Morris what his team has to do to beat the speedy Loyola Marymount Lions. It's difficult to do, it's easy to say because... Uncompromising quality, it is the most important ingredient in a valuable gemstone. At Earth's Corner Jewelers, this quality is our reputation earned by the jewelry we create and the service we offer our customers. With two jewelers on the premises, repairs are completed quickly and at a much lower cost to you. And with our selection and prices of gemstones, especially diamonds, there's no need to head to Sanson Street anymore. Earth's Corner Jewelers, now at two convenient locations, the Valley Forge Mall, Phoenixville, and Audubon Village Shopping Center, Audubon. Penske Chevrolet may be hard to find, but Penske Chevrolet is definitely tough to beat. Thousands of people have found Penske Chevrolet to be the best place to buy exciting Chevy cars, trucks, and geos. Why? A knowledgeable sales staff, outstanding service, and specials like lease an all-new Geo Storm for $229 per month. Penske Chevrolet Geo takes Montgomery and Chester counties by storm. No one sells Chevrolets and Geos for less. No one. Penske Chevrolet on Goddard Boulevard across from Wanamaker's King of Prussia Mall. Hard to find, but tough to beat. United Airlines, 
from the ground up, rededicated to giving you the service you deserve. Come fly the friendly skies. Loyola Marymount led into battle by its explosive front court. They're disappointed if they don't reach the 100-point mark in every basketball game, and what a great start for Speedy Morris and his explorers. And right now, Sean, the thing that they've got to do, and I'm talking about LaSalle, if they're going to slow Loyola Marymount down, they've got to find some way to take care of the basketball. That's difficult against a club that's got a lot of quickness, and Loyola does have it. Keep an eye on Hank Gathers tonight. He could be the key to this basketball game. If he's healthy, ready to play, you can see them get into 120 and 30s very easily. Gathers jump center with Lionel Simmons. And LaSalle, dressed in their home gold uniforms, controlled the opening tip. This may be the longest possession of the night. Randy Woods gives it to Milko Leavers. They don't get much offense from Leavers. Mostly, he's a rebounder. It's very obvious what Speedy Morris is trying to do. He's going to slow down the tempo of this game. He would like to get it under control if he can. Jack Hurd for three. Well, that's, that's ten. Now they know they want to go. Here we go. Jeff Breyer missed his three, gathers the rebound. That's a good sign for LaSalle. Hurd hitting the three. He's been very cold from the floor all season long, and he stripped the ball from Gathers. Good start for LaSalle. The explorers right out of the box, get a three, and then a steal. Loyal to Marymount in a man to man defense. Simmons. Simmons shot over Kimball, 5 nothing for Speedy Morris as it scores one minute in the basketball game. Notice how smooth Simmons is when he lets that jump shot go. I've watched him play about a half a dozen times since he started as a freshman at LaSalle. He's got such a nice stroke, and I mean, it looks very unaffected, like no one could ever bother him in his shot. He's very good. That's why we got so many NBA scouts here tonight. Tony Walker. Open in the lane, Gathers. Oh. Off the back iron, Gathers went up and pulled down a strong rebound and missed. Pair Steamer, too strong, the rebound Simmons. Three easy ones underneath and they blew all three. Good pass, Lieber's lays it in. He took a great pass from Overton. 7-0 LaSalle. And Walker went out of bounds. And the Civic Center, sold out with more than 10,000 LaSalle partisans, is rocking early. Great start by the Explorers. LaSalle right out of the box. What a great pass by Overton. The officials tonight assigned by the MAC. That's the league. LaSalle plays in Jim Green, John Corio, and Joe Vigna. LMU and a man to man. Heard missed the three. Levers went up with Steamer, and the foul is going against Milk Gold Levers. What did they call him? The Milkman. <laughs> Delivers. That was a battle between Steamer, the man you see on your screen, from Sweden, and Levers, just from the Netherlands. Is that similar to the mailman who delivers? <laughs> Milkman doesn't deliver as much scoring as the mailman, but he gets his share of rebounds. 7 0 LaSalle. Jeff Fryer hits the three. That's a big one for him. I did a game in Oklahoma earlier in the year when he just was one of 11, over 11, and the other night against St. Joe's, he had a difficult time shooting. He was 0 for 10 from three-point land against St. Joe's on Thursday night. Foul called as Simmons was driving to the basket. Hank Gathers picks up his first. Sal in transition, pretty good. Giving the LMU a little bit of their own look. Speedy Morris says if the opportunity to run is there, he will. Simmons. Right off the inbound from her, and it's 9-3 in scores. Speedy Morris justified his decision to run with Loyola Marymount by saying he thinks his athletes are every bit as talented as the Lions athletes. I'd have to agree with him. I think he has a great group of athletes. They're off to a tremendous start. Best start they've had in their history. Foul falls underneath. It's an offensive foul against Paul Kimball. So the two superstars up front for Loyola Marymount have each picked up a personal foul. Watch Kimball right here. Woods trying to keep him away. He just throws him away from the key. Seventeen thirty-seven remaining in the first half. It's a 9-3 lead for LaSalle. Good pressure that time by Loyola. They get the turnover. Fryer underneath, and it's dropped out of bounds by Kimball. Good pass by Fryer. Kimball is not very alert. Pass hit him right in the chest, went out of bounds. Oh, what a pass! 
Woods to Overton. To this point, LaSalle is at no trouble handling the pressure from Loyola. Gathers through up the runner, and Lever is called for the block, his second personal. And we should point out early, Larry, LaSalle is not a deep team. No, they're not. They play basically six guys. And we asked Kenny Morris about that. He says, if in fact we get into a situation where we need more players, he says, I'll put them in there, but we're going to take advantage of those TV timeouts. Speedy Morris in his fourth year as head coach at LaSalle. Looking splendid in his white sweater there. Certainly a contrast in style on the sideline between Speedy and Paul Westhead. Now here's something unusual. Hank Gather started shooting free throws left-handed just a couple of weeks ago. Decided to do that because he wasn't shooting very well right-handed. He may have to find a third hand after that first one. The first one didn't hit the rim at all. It just clanged off the backboard to the left side of the rim. The second one got a piece of the rim. Kimball forced the steal. Walker with it. Gathers lays it in. Gathers very active tonight. Good sign. Talking with Gathers and Kimball, certainly no doubt that they are excited to be playing in their old hometown. And against some longtime friends. It's like a backyard uh, basketball game, you know? Get on the bricks and let's tee it up and see who can play the best. Doug Overton to Randy Woods for three. Well, the sound looks great. I mean, great in the first four minutes. Gathers got the bounce. What a tough shot. 14-7 for LaSalle. And the nation's leading scorer is yet to score. Lionel Simmons. And as usual, the Lions waste no time. This time they throw it away. The pass from Walker too far ahead of Jeff Fryer. A little surprising. Loyola Marymount not off to a very quick start. LaSalle jumping all over them early. Here comes the pressure. And the explorers have handled it easily throughout. Heard long with the three. Rebound batted around, came down to gather. Now Walker off nice the gas. Pass. Well, what great work that was by Walker to get it on the right side and look up and find Gathers coming down the middle. Give it go. 16-9 LaSalle. We played just more than four minutes. Jack Heard for two more. Well, Simmons made a great pass, too. Walker drives the lane and lays it in. So I'll just jump in here once in a while. <laughs> well, Paul Westhead says ideally they'll get a shot off within two seconds of when they get possession. That ball is knocked away by Walker. Speedy Morris wanted a foul call. Walker takes it himself. He charged. Up and down they go. An explosive first four minutes and 38 seconds, and it's LaSalle with an 18 to 11 lead. And there's a timeout on the floor. The unbeaten LaSalle Explorers trying to go to 9 0. They lead by seven early. You want a deal? Well, here comes the deal. Now get low 4.8 APR financing for up to 48 months on all new Cutlass Supremes. This deal is not just another deal. It's Oldsmobile's new generation celebration. We've made it possible for our dealers to pass along millions of dollars to their customers on all other models. Hurry, these deals won't last forever. This is the deal the new generation. It's just a pure and natural beer for you. So I see cold, so crisp, so clean for you. Of all the beers that are cold filtered, only one has that distinctively clean, crisp taste. Budweiser, cold filtered and beechwood aged for over 110 years. This bug's for you. Save your dough. For a limited time, Domino's Pizza has a New Year's deal. Two pizzas each with one topping for only $10.95. You can't get this deal just anywhere, so why go anywhere? Call Domino's Pizza on the double. We'll be there in 30 minutes or less, hot and fresh. 
two pizzas for ten ninety five. Call Domino's Pizza. Nobody delivers better. Nobody, 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 nobody. Offer may vary. Welcome back to our studios. This report just in from Houston. Oilers owner Bud Adams has confirmed at a press conference that Jerry Glanville has been fired as head coach of the Oilers. You know, there had been some friction there late in the season. The Oilers lost the wild card game to Pittsburgh last weekend. And so Glanville, after a tumultuous season, is gone as Houston head coach. We'll have some reaction to this and a further report at halftime of our game. In the meantime, let's go back now to Philadelphia. Sean and Larry are sending by at the Civic Center, and the uh, LaSalle Explorer is off to a good start against Loyola Marymount. Let's go back to the arena right now. And he told us, as we mentioned earlier, that they want to get a shot off as quickly as possible every time down the floor, ideally within two seconds. And they can do it. That's a high-powered offense. LaSalle's got to take a timeout now because they could not get the ball inbounds because of the Loyola Marymount yeah. press. It's still Speedy Morris's club leading by seven, and we'll be right back. Join the U.S. Armed Forces. You're in with top quality people and top quality experiences. Opportunity is waiting for you. In the U.S. Armed Forces. You're in. Trofeo. Trofeo. It's a new generation and they want a new host. Sequential port, fuel injection, anti-lock brakes. It is come and they want a new host. Visual information center handles great. This Oldsmobile is not our father's. New generation for the sons and daughters. Trofeo. This is the new generation of Oldsmobile. ESPN gives you a spectacular courtside view of Big Monday, slam jammed with color and excitement. Check out the sparkling sights and sounds of electrifying shootouts all season long. What a big basket! Oh, what a move! Welcome to college basketball, Big Monday! Georgetown battles Pitt, Michigan takes on Indiana, and UNLV faces New Mexico State on Big Monday at 7.30 Eastern, live on ESPN. LaSalle quickly out of the gate with that seven-point lead, but we talked about Paul Westhead and the way Loyola Marymount moves the ball up the floor quickly. Look at this. One pass, one man handling the ball on the dribble, and the layup. That's the way the Lions like to handle their offense. LaSalle had to use the timeout moments ago, and they could not inbound the ball against the pressure. This time they handle it easily. Woods. Now Bob Johnson just into the game. Missed the three. Simmons missed the putback. That's the first miss from the field for Lionel Simmons. He had been three for three. Pretty good movement that time by Loyola. When they take the break, most of the time it's down the right side. LaSalle's aware of that, and they're trying to get over to cut off that sideline. Use that sideline. If you're on defense, it's your friend. Jeff Fryer short with the three. Simmons the board. That will not slow him up. He will continue to shoot the ball. Johnson. Woods from well behind the line missed. And Kimball tracked it down to the corner. And yet to see anything in the scoring uh, mark for Kimball. The new man into the game who just handled the ball for Loyola Marymount is number 20, Terrell Lowry. Also into the game, Chris Knight for the Lions. He's wearing number 34. And Lieber's with his two fouls has been replaced in the middle for LaSalle by Bron Holland, number 51. Again, Fryer missed the three. Holland the rebound. Really struggling from the outside, Fryer is shooting only 33%. Oh, what a move inside by Bob Johnson. On a terrific pass from Woods. Steal. Caused by Holland. Johnson saved it. Now Woods pulls up. Too strong off the glass. Difficult shot. You're on the run and you're right in front of the basket. You're going to make up your mind. If Fryer credit, and even when he's cold, he keeps firing the three. That's what Westhead wants him to do, and it makes it a six-point game. Forget it. Just get your three-in-one oil out and oil up the elbow. It's going up. Steal by Loyola Marymount. And the layup by 
Terrell Lowry, his first two points. He's a sophomore from Oakland, California. And again, loyal to Mary Mountain, right back with a the press. They've cut the lead to four. It's 20 to 16, LaSalle, with 13 and a half left in the first half. Average time per possession to this point for Loyola, 12 seconds. For Loyola Marymount, or rather for LaSalle, just more than nine seconds. Fouls on Bron Holland, a transfer from St. Bonaventure. Not a Princeton-type game. No. This was almost the score at halftime for the Princeton game I had earlier this season with Clark Kellogg. I believe that game was something like 24-20 at the half. You know, John, that's what makes college basketball interesting to me because every coach has a different philosophy about the way they want to teach the game. Paul Westhead likes to do it like this. He loves to run up and down the floor. It's entertaining. Everybody buys tickets. They come out. They watch the shooting, the running. They play decent defense. I'm not going to say it's great defense, but they put a lot of pressure on that ball. Lowry hits the three. You talk about getting you back in the game quick. They will shoot you right in or shoot you right out. They're back within one. Nearly the steal. And the foul as Woods took it up. Woods got a seat. Terrell Lowry picked up his first foul. Let's watch it from up top. And look at the press by Loyola Marymount. And you can see right here how LaSalle handles the press. Now they're three on one. Once they got by that first wave, Woods is wide open. And there's Lowry with the foul from the backside. You know, you beat that first wave of Loyola's in the press. You get by that first three or four guys. Basically, you're two-on-one or three-on-one on, on every situation. Interesting that Speedy Morris doesn't have anybody along the lane. It's supposed to be a Philadelphia tradition. John Cheney over Temple does the same thing. He pulls his guys off, too. Woods made two. It's back to a three-point lead for the Explorers. It's on defense right now by LaSalle. Maybe the last time I get to talk about defense. Steamer. He can hit the three. He missed that time. Simmons had it knocked away. Tom Peabody puts it back in. Peabody good hustle that time. Slapped it away. Got an easy basket. Press again by Loyola Marymount. And the steal again. Gathers. Behind the back. He got it back after it deflected off Kimball but missed the shot. Look at the block by Holland that time. Jack Hurd cut off by Steamer who slapped the ball away. Hurd got it back. Woods tried to feed it, but it was knocked away by Peabody. Slam dunk with authority by Bo Kimball. His first two points. Well, the nation's leading score starts off with a jam. All of a sudden, Loyola Marymount leads by one. Doug Overton off the back rim. Lowry the rebound. And he was knocked down. How about that move, huh? Little move to the left, crossover move to the right. Overton not quick enough to move those legs to get in position. Got the blocking call. Jeff Pryor comes back into the game. Johnson returns for LaSalle. Steamer went out along with Bo Kimball. And in for the first time is John O'Connell, number 14. He's another Philadelphia area native. He's from Glenside, Pennsylvania. Gathers lost it as he was double teamed. Johnson. Just barely scraped the front rim. Simmons lost it out of bounds, but LaSalle will keep it. It was knocked out of bounds by Jeff Pryor. I always wonder how a guy can go inside with a basketball like that and have it slapped away with everybody reaching in there. How can they get away with not calling a foul? Good pass. Hurd thought he was fouled. Speedy Morris really irate on the sidelines. Pryor hits the three. He's warming up. And Loyola with a four-point lead. Hurd for three. Line drives it home. Hurd came in. Hitting just 21% from three-point land. That's his second trifecta. Great save by Peabody and the layup put home by Gathers. You know, they handle the ball really well. They go up and down the floor, but they're always looking for a teammate. Simmons inside. Forced the shot. Again, the partisan crowd wanted a foul. They don't get it. Speedy Morris wants that foul. I mean, he is burning the referee's ears. 
All alone was Johnson and Hurd found him for the easy two. And now a blocking foul against Overton. He didn't like it. He thought it was a travel against Lowry. Overton's second foul. So for our fans at home, they can take a look at the way Loyola Marymount runs their break. On that side of the floor that you're looking at right now where the official is, every time they get the ball through the net, they'll bring it up on that side of the floor. Every time LaSalle has put a man there to try to stop it, they have not been very successful. All right, let's watch it now. Down here. Lowry with Woods right in his face. Gathers lost it. They gave it right back. There's a foul. Tom Peabody fouled Bob Johnson. You like Peabody. You've seen him before. You had the Oklahoma game here on ESPN. And they call him the human bruise for the way he throws his body around. And he does. I mean, he just flies all over the court. We haven't seen it tonight, but uh, in that Oklahoma game, I've never seen anybody go on the floor as much as he did. Turnovers piling up on both sides. They're just dead even, and the score is almost dead even. A one-point lead for Loyola Marymount. Nice pass by Simmons. And Holland was fouled underneath by John O'Connor. His first. You know, John, I talked a little bit at the top of the show about Lionel Simmons being down in his production this year, point production. But the rest of the guys have raised their average, and I think his contribution from the assist side, making the good passes when he has to, has lowered his average but raised the team's level. So I think it's a positive note for LaSalle. Ron Holland shooting two. He's a transfer from St. Bonaventure. Speedy Morris had Holland available. He's got one of those good 1950s flat tops. He just became eligible four games ago. Transferred after one semester last year, but it set out the first semester this year. Tie ball game, nearly a steal, but it was kept alive by Peabody. What a pass inside by Peabody. What a great catch by O'Connell. Two-point lead for Loyola. Lionel Simmons, strong drive, tipped it back twice, didn't get it. Jack Hurd came away from the pile with it. Hurd. Shot over O'Connell, didn't get the roll, gathers the rebound. Gathers. He's back. Trust me, he's back. He had been taking medication since his collapse on the floor a month ago. That medication has been reduced. He says he feels better. And he's playing better tonight. Heard again for three. Too strong. Terrell Lowry. Foul called up high, and it's going against Bron Holland. The big man in the middle for the side. You know, if Holland doesn't give him a push from the back side, he's going to charge because he ran right over the top of a LaSalle that defender on the inside. Like Jack Hurd had great position to draw that charge. That Holland gave him the push and knocked him in there. Steamer back into the game for Loyola. Will go Lieber with his two fouls checks back in for Holland. Six-team fouls now for LaSalle. Fryer didn't get the roll on the three. Like I said, he won't stop. It'll keep going up. Third for three. Nearly scraped the rim. Fryer. Walker gave it off. Crowd wanted a traveling call against Peabody. They didn't get it, but they did get Kimball going out of bounds along the baseline. You know, I thought maybe Kimball was going to get away with that one on the inside because he looked like he'd gotten pushed on the outside. I thought maybe Levers had pushed him a little bit. It's a difficult call for an official down low like that because he's got to look down and check the line without looking up to see if the guy really was pushed. Chris Knight's back in for Loyola. Peabody went to the bench. Simmons, off his own miss, got fouled. Chris Knight picks up the personal. I find something interesting on that shot Lionel Simmons took right there. He shot it short, and he was really only about 8 to 10 feet away. 
and when he put the ball up, it looked like it was going in. I'm wondering if he might not get a, be getting a little bit weary early in the first half here, but he's running up and down the floor and doing a lot of the work underneath the board on the rebound at the time. Speedy Morris is the only guy I knew, I know, that it went from coaching women's college basketball to men's college basketball. It was very successful in both. Two years as the women's coach, Speedy was 43 and 17 and led the Lady Explorers to a nice MAC conference title, then became the men's head coach, and in four seasons he's won two MAC titles. Went to the finals of the NIT in his first year here and has been to the NCAA tournament each of the last two years. Done a great job twice, the Mac Coach of the Year each of the last two seasons. Eight points for Simmons. It's a two-point Loyola Marymount lead. LaSalle's in his own defense. They're matching up. Steamer look. Ball batted away by Overton. Race for it. Overton saved it to Woods. Woods got slapped in the face by Steamer. Steamer didn't mean it. He was just trying to block the shot. And he slapped Woods right across the face. It was a nice check on the part of Steamer. He didn't do that intentionally. He was trying to reach for the ball, and he got more of his right side of his face than anything. Overton's now going to jump in the line for LaSalle. He's the only guy down underneath for, re for rebounding purposes for LaSalle. We were seeing the purpose of that, Larry, would be so that Loyola can't take the ball out of bounds and run right up the floor immediately. Well, that could be. And also, you get your guys back on defense a little bit quicker, too. If you got them down there and they push the ball out of that net, pull it out and go quickly, you got nobody back, you're in trouble. Kimball waving everybody away. Oh, he almost threw it right. It was a difficult catch by Tony Walker. Lions with a one-point lead, and Walker turned it over. Randy Woods, good defensive work. Johnson alone for three, too strong. Woods puts it right back up, way short. Finally, Kimball to Walker. Puts the defense and lays it in. Nice move by Walker. He's got some quickness. One of those guys, you just, I mean, there's just so many players you can talk about on a glove. You got Gathers and you got Kimball. Walker can play. He is very quick. Lee Burst off to Simmons. He missed the layup. Looked like he was expecting contact with Steamer underneath. Steamer moved out of the way. That might have thrown the shot off. Timeout on the floor. Loyola Marymount has come back to take a three-point lead. And we'll be right back. You may not be ready for competition, yes, but you will enjoy ice skating at the General Washington Ice Skating Rink. Experienced skaters will love our facilities, and newcomers will find that it's never too early or too late to learn. Our PSGA professionals make learning easy and enjoyable. Ice skating at the General Washington for grace and beauty, for health and relaxation, for dynamic action and fun. Ice skating at the General Washington for you. Come on, get up on skates and glide. If you've shopped for a car, you've probably heard some great lines. But there's only one line that really counts, and that's the bottom line. And you can be sure of the very best bottom line at Conicelli. Because if you can find a better deal within 30 days after purchasing a new car or truck from a Conicelli dealership, I'll give you a refund. Now that's the best bottom line, guaranteed. For Toyota in Conshohocken, Chrysler Plymouth in Norristown, and Pontiac in Norristown, it's Conicelli for the best bottom line, guaranteed. Four-wheel drive? It means that you can drive in every direction at the same time. There's four steering wheels for driving. Anti-lock brakes? Yes, you can lock them so no one will spill them. Kids may not understand what Ford Aerostar's new four-wheel drive and standard rear anti-lock brakes are all about. But rest assured, their parents do. Now get 4.8 financing for up to 48 months or a $1,000 cash bonus on Ford Aerostar. Loyola Marymount leads by three. They've come from behind to take the lead. LaSalle got off to a strong start based on red-hot shooting. They started out eight for their first ten, but they pulled off considerably, as you can see, now shooting 33% for the game. It's really amazing, Larry, that they are 8-0, considering they came into this game shooting 40%.
from the floor for the season. Meanwhile, Bo Kimball hasn't been too hot either. The leading scorer in the nation with just two points, but his team has a three-point lead. Yeah, if I, you, you got three players in this game. Bo oh. Kimball leading the nation in scoring. As you see the miss right here. Hank Gathers led it last year. Lionel Simmons was the number three scorer in the nation last year. Gathers lays it in. Largest lead now for Loyola. Five points at 36-31. I think LaSalle would really like to slow this thing down as they possibly could. I think that pace really caught up with them. They're beginning to shoot the ball very poorly right now. Simmons with the foot back of the Woods miss. Gathers, no. Look at Campbell. Tried an impossible shot and got lucky as Gathers picked up the ball. Fryer. Oh, tough shot over Simmons. That's a travel. Doug Overton walked with it. Nice job that time defensively by Fryer to cause that turnover. That's the one thing about Loyola. They'll throw that press at you, and if you beat them, you either got to put a shot up quickly or make a pass quickly because they're coming from behind. Let's see how long it takes on this possession for them to get a shot. A little bit, a little different here. Court, ga court game, half court. And Gathers hits from inside the foul line. That didn't take very long for them to get a shot off. Again, the largest lead for Loyola. Now seven points. Woods missed badly on the three. Johnson, the offensive board, the four. That shot taken in less than five seconds, and Gathers hit it. That should have been a three. The indication it's for two. And again, a seven point game. Kimball, three. They're confused at the scorer's table. They gave a three pointer for that last shot by Overton, and they shouldn't have. It was a two point. Simmons got the bounce. No call on the contact with Steamer. Steamer got a bounce, too. About three or four on the floor. Scoreboard has it right now at 45-40. As you look at the possession clock, they wanted to take that shot in about seven seconds, but the foul negated the shot. I will tell you, the last four trips, neither team took longer than six seconds to get a shot off. And I think the point you made early on about Lionel Simmons applies not only now to Simmons, but the rest of the team. The, the Sal players look like they're all... Sean, the, the, the difficulty in playing a club like Loyola Marymount is you've got to be in great condition because you're going to run up and down the floor a lot, and you know that. And if you're used to playing a half-court game and maybe a zone defense where you can rest a little bit, it's very easy. But when you're playing a club that goes up and down the floor and you've got to keep up with them, well, you better be in great condition. Bo Kimball, an excellent free throw shooter, 92% for the year coming into tonight. Look at Gathers go up and get that ball. Had it stolen. Good job that time by Wood. It's a five-point game with five minutes to play in the first half. Loyola Marymount with the lead. Strong drive, but the miss by Woods. Rebound, Holland. And Ron Holland has given LaSalle some offense off the bench. Steamer had it knocked away. And a foul call against Bob Johnson. A very unpopular call here in Philadelphia. Steamer went in there, and he was. He was steaming down the middle. And Holland got up. It's like he was going to grab him from the back, from the back from the back side, and then Johnson got it and went straight to the floor, and the foul goes against him. Watch it again. Here's Steamer. Johnson reached out and fouled him right there. Then he followed on through and committed the foul later, but the foul actually occurred before he ran over him. Steamer is a 70% free throw shooter. He is from Sweden, as we mentioned earlier. Wound up at Loyola Marymount because a former coach of his in Sweden is a Loyola Marymount graduate, Brad Dean, a former Lion forward from the class of 75. Jeff Breyer, 21. Loyola Marymount. Jeff Breyer's back in. Bo Kimball goes out for the Lions. They lead by five. Good pressure again by Loyola. Hey, Loyola Marymount's got a nice press. What they've got to do is get plenty of practice running. Yeah, that's right. And what they've got to do is cover a little quicker. Almost a good pass thrown away by Simmons. They get it back. Hank Gathers applauding his team's effort. Terrell Lowry. 
Peabody. Now Peabody. Taken down by Fryer off the steamer and gathers. That's the five from the all touches on this possession. And the miss taken down by Simmons. Man in the clear is Woods. He had to wait for the pass. Simmons again appeared tired, but he didn't have enough on that pass. Overton, the long three, long rebound. Holland in the corner. Nice pass, Woods wide open. Way off with the shot. Sal is starting to miss badly, and Johnson called for the foul off the rebound. The telltale sign are the legs. When the when you start missing your shots, your legs are not getting you in good position, a good lift to get up for that jump shot. And I think that's part of their problem. I think this type of game really did not, does not play well for LaSalle. We were talking with Speedy Morris. He thinks it's impossible against this Loyola team to come into the half court, set up your offense, and run it because they won't let you with the three-man traps. He says it's impossible to run. Sooner or later, they're going to induce you to take the layup and go ahead and shoot. If you make it, Loyola says, that's fine. If you miss it, great. We take the ball and go the other way. Well, that's right. And the opportunity of being able to take a layup, you're not going to pass that up. You're going to go ahead and take the shot when you've got an easy, high-percentage shot. And that lulls you into that type of game. And you like to go up and down the floor, and that's exactly what Paul Westhead wants to do with everybody he plays. Seven-point lead for Loyola Marymount. We're nearly halfway to 100, still four minutes to play in the first half, 49-42. Jack Hurd has it back from Holland and lost it. Kimball knocked it to Lowry, but he fell out of bounds along the sideline. 3.50 to play in the first half. Loyola Marymount leads by seven and will return to the Philadelphia Civic Center in just a moment. Save your dough. For a limited time, Domino's Pizza has a New Year's deal. Two pizzas each with one topping for only $10.95. You can't get this deal just anywhere, so why go anywhere? Call Domino's Pizza on the double. We'll be there in 30 minutes or less, hot and fresh. Two pizzas for $10.95. Call Domino's Pizza. Nobody delivers better. Nobody, 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 nobody. Offer may vary. They say that by a certain age, you fall into a predictable pattern of statistics. One spouse, 2.5 children, one three-bedroom home, and a typical four-door sedan. But what do they know? The 220 horsepower, 24 valve Ford Taurus SHO. Just when they thought they had you all figured out. Now get 4.8 financing for up to 48 months or a $1,000 cash bonus on Ford Taurus. We got our work cut out for us, Jess. We got a shot to the middle of the green. We can make par. What do we got for yardage? 197 to the hole. What do you think? Uphill, three iron. Kind of fired up. I'm going to take a four right over that tree and make a birdie, huh? You got that shot. Hank is a, a very, very dominant player. He, he controls the blocks really well. He rebounds well. He runs the floor like a, a deer. And you know, the one thing that he has is a lot of tenacity. And he, he just keeps playing and playing. And, you know, he's never tired. And... Larry, that was a pretty good scouting report from Lionel Simmons on Hank Gathers. If you look at Bo Kimball, who has not been as active as his partner in the front court for Loyola. You know, he got 54 the other night, which I said at the top of the show was a school record. Maybe uh, tonight it's Hank Gathers' turn. Mm -hmm. Share a little bit of the scoring load. 16 points for Hank Gathers. Doug Overton, LaSalle with the ball trailing by seven. Three and a half minutes to play in the first half. The three-pointer spun out and Pryor saved it. Lowry pushes it down the lane. Scoop shot, got it to go. I'm not sure there's a scoop or whether it bounced off on a pass. LaSalle lost the ball. Lowry came up with it. Fryer off to Peabody. Good job. Well, Marymount is starting to pull away. They lead by 11. Here comes the double team. Watch it at midcourt. Peabody will come. There it is. Good handling that time by LaSalle. There's that layup. You've got to take him. And Loyola 
with a very careless turnover as Steamer inbounded it. Lowry was heading up the floor and didn't see it coming and went off Lowry out of bounds. Well, the guy that constantly tried to get the ball to is Lowry on that right side over there because he runs the break for him. I'm surprised Overton just uh, doesn't station himself there immediately after a made shot and try to contest that. Either he or Woodsy the one. Westhead continues to substitute freely. Meanwhile, Speedy Morris has only used seven players in the game. The only bench players who have played are Johnson and Holland. Third travel. No, he was fouled first. Gathers went down. He's in the corner. I'm not sure what happened. The foul was on Jeff Fryer. His first personal foul. Both teams well over the limit. You know, that gets a little scary because I looked at that tape of the time that he went down on December the 9th in that ball game and just collapsed. But it looks like he just went down and maybe caught an elbow in the face. Indeed he did. They ran a full battery of tests on Hank Gathers after he collapsed on the free throw line in the game December 9th against UC Santa Barbara. They haven't found a single thing wrong with him. He's in outstanding physical condition, as you can probably tell just by looking at him. He wore out a couple of treadmills, we are told. But they are keeping him on medication. Although, as you said earlier, they've reduced that medication. You know what he just did? He looked over at Pear Steamer and he says, was that foul on me? And he said, no, no. He says it was on another guy. That called for the foul for putting his jaw into Hurd's elbow. <laughs> foul was on Fryer, and Hurd converted the two free throws. The South back within seven with 2.38 to play in the first half. Kimball around Hurd. Tough shot, didn't make it, heard the rebound. Hurd's had a pretty good first half for LaSalle. LaSalle has had a chance over the last couple of moments with the delays to catch their breath collectively. Simmons hits. Here come the Explorers, back within five with 2.10 to play in the first half. Campbell. Three-pointer. He can do that. The Lions is a team break the other team's momentum so quickly. Simmons took it all the way in. A little faint of roll. Here we come back. Good job by Woods to slow down Walker and let the rest of the defense get back. Walker open. And Steamer was all over the back of Jack Hurd. His second personal foul. Jack Hurd was the MAC Conference Rookie of the Year last year. As Gathers has gone to the bench, Chris Knight is back in. He's one of those lunch pail guys. You know, puts his hard hat on, comes to work. Not flashy. Only averaged seven points a game, two rebounds. He's had a pretty good first half tonight, though. Missed the free throw. Still a six-point lead for Loyola Marymount. Kimball had it knocked away. I believe it's Holland who will pick up the personal, or Hurd. They were both there, and it's Hurd who's been given the foul. You know what you like about Bo Kimball as a player? A lot, a lot of guys want to do it from the outside, but Kimball will take it to the inside. He's also a strong rebounder, which I find amazing. His size is 6'5", 190, but he's averaging seven rebounds a game, and he gets a lot of points down inside. Two shots? Yeah, you got two. One! Kimball has not scored fewer than 21 points in a game this year. That was in the first game of the season. He had 21 against UNLV. He's bettered that in every game since, although the way he's going tonight, he might struggle to better that tonight. Don't worry, he'll be there. Overton missed the three, long rebound to Peabody. Looked like he was fouled by Hurd, no call. LaSalle has it back with a minute 15 and a half. Again, the miss on the three, and no question about that foul on Jack Hurd. I'll tell you what, I'd like to put Hurd and Steamer in a room and just let them collide with each other. <laughs> they just run into each other. LaSalle fouls over 25, Jack Hurd is the second personal foul. Second
second foul on her. You know what the other thing is in, in, in a game like this, it's very difficult to get a handle on it. There are items that you can change, you can make adjustments in. In this type of game, there are no coaching adjustments. I mean, yeah, you can go out and you can do one or two small things, but you know basically how the game is going to be played. No strategies, just go out loud. Peabody missed. And Kimball with the rebound. Chris Knight kept that alive as he knocked it away from Simmons into the lap of Kimball. Lowry didn't get the bounce on the three. Knight had the tip but missed. Johnson heard for three. Johnson had his paws on the rebound but couldn't come down with it. Knight did. Lowry. Four on two break. And the layup for Kimball. Here you go now. Watch the defense. Here's the pressure right here by Loyola Marymount. Now, if LaSalle can beat that first wave, they'll have three on one. There's the three on one and an easy shot. Lionel Simmons. Both sides now have been given a delay of game warning. That's the reason for the whistle. Coming up at halftime, NFL playoff highlights. The winners today, the Cleveland Browns and the San Francisco 49ers. And scores and highlights from around college basketball as well. And we'll also get a full report on the Jerry Glanville situation. Well, the 49ers look good today or what? Pryor missed the three. Nine seconds left. The seven-point lead for Loyola. Two seconds left. Herder got the big three at the buzzer. A momentum boost for the Explorers of LaSalle. The three-pointer sends them into the locker room, trailing only by four. Well, watch it again. You think they're going to run out of time, but they make just enough passes and get it into the hands of the right guy. They haven't made too many of these threes in this first half, but they got this one, and that was a big one. A little momentum. At the half of the Philadelphia Civic Center, it's Loyola Marymount 59 and LaSalle 55. Now back to the studios and Chris Fowler. Okay, thanks, fellas. Good first half. Both teams on a 100-point pace. A lot to tell you about on this halftime report. Let's get right to it. First of all, to the NFL. We told you earlier, Jerry Glanville has been relieved of his duties as head coach of the Houston Oilers. The Oilers not calling it a firing. But in a press conference about an hour ago, Bud Adams decided that he and Glanville mutually agreed Glanville would not be back. He has been the head coach of the Oilers since late in the 85 season, but the team has failed to win a division title and does not advance to the Super Bowl. Glanville, of course, has been plenty controversial off the field. It was an emotional scene at the press conference, as I said, about an hour ago in Houston. Uh, Mr. Adams and I uh, decided today after two and a half hours that uh, one thing we want to do is remain friends for life. And with that, uh, we concurred this is probably the best way to do that. My wife and I are so fortunate that uh, so many things happened to us uh, in the city with the football team and with Mr. Adams. I don't think uh, anybody is probably as lucky as I am. I may be the luckiest guy that ever lived. I don't have to document. Uh, it's well documented what he's done for the city of Houston with the the uh, the ill and the uh, homeless. I want to wish both of them the best of luck. You know, Glanville has been speculated as a candidate for the Atlanta job. Wade Phillips would seem to be a candidate for the Houston job, the Broncos' defensive coordinator. But Adams did say that he wanted a coach with NFL experience, which would seem to rule out Jackie Sherrill. His name has been bandied about as a candidate for about a year now. Meanwhile, on the field in the NFL, AFC playoff team, the champions of that wild and wacky AFC Central Division, the Browns hosting the Buffalo Bills, third quarter Buffalo. Cuts the Cleveland lead to 24-21, but then Eric Metcalf, the rookie out of Texas, takes the ensuing kickoff, 90 yards. The Bills usually good on kickoff coverage, not this time, 31-21. Bills would have a chance to come back. Watch Ronnie Harmon open in the end zone, can't get the Kelly pass with 10 seconds to play. Kelly, emotional. Next play. One more chance for Buffalo. Kelly, looking for Thurman Thomas over the middle. Clay Matthews steps in front for the interception at the goal line. 
Art Modell is relieved as the Browns hold on for a 34-30 victory in a terrific game. Cleveland now onto the AFC Championship game either next week at Denver or they could host the Steelers if Pittsburgh beats the Broncos third time in four years of the AFC Championship game for Cleveland. Meanwhile, in the NFC, good matchup. Looked like a good matchup against the Minnesota Vikings defense against the 49ers offense. Didn't turn out that way. Minnesota led it 3-0. Then the un Niners unloaded Montana to Jerry Rice. Watched him go past five Vikings, 72 yards for a touchdown. Made it 7-3 Niners. A lot more Montana to Rice in the first half. Montana, four touchdown passes in the first 30 minutes. Here's Rice again, a 13-yarder. And the Niners roll easily over Minnesota, 41-13. So San Francisco against the winner of the Rams-Giants playoff game next week in the NFC Championship game. We will continue a lot more college basketball scores and highlights to show you when we continue at halftime. Loyola Marymount and LaSalle locked up in a good high-scoring battle. We'll continue from the studios in just a minute. Anybody who knows anything about four-wheel drive can tell you about Ford's Touch Drive the standard system on this Ford Ranger, and it lets you go in and out of four-wheel drive on the fly just by pushing a button on the dash. Ford Ranger, number one, for all the right reasons. So why mess around with some clumsy floor-mounted shift like Chevy has when you can just push a button? See your dealer now for low financing or a $1,000 cash bonus on Ford Ranger. This is the shop of Samsat Pazar a thriving establishment on the outskirts of Bangkok. Unlike other international executives, he has no phone system, no computers, not even a fax machine. He does, however, enjoy one modern and efficient service nearly four billion people in 175 countries today can take for granted. UPS. We run the tightest ship in the shipping business. I send you for a Bud Light, and you bring back... Well, Bud Light won't fill you up, never lets you down. So, there are no men here, there's an unlimited supply of Bud Light, and we can never leave. Correct. Everything else is just a light. We can live with that. Yeah. Today's Duracell battery lasts up to 30% longer than the one from a few years back. Duracell. You can't top the copper tank. Perfection, where there's nothing new under the sun, but under the ground. This valley is one long smorgasbord. Kevin Bacon. Tremors. Rated PG-13. Starts Friday, January 19th at theaters everywhere. ESPN's NCAA Basketball, Loyola Marymount at LaSalle, is brought to you by Ford and your local Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? By Taylor Made, makers of Tour Preferred Irons and Metal Woods. And by UPS, fast, efficient service to 175 countries and territories worldwide. Welcome back to halftime. The past couple of days have shown us that although Georgetown and Syracuse are tough atop the Big East Conference, they will not simply dominate. Good death. Hoyas and Providence today, and they got all they can handle. Mark Tillman, watch the terrific catch and then the dunk. A career day for Tillman. Georgetown by two. Marcus Bragg ties it up with Jam at 76. Hoy and Friars rather hung tough against the Hoyas. Watch the shot by Tillman. Puts the Hoyas up 91-90. Rick Barnes can't believe it. Friars last chance. Two seconds left. Eric Murdoch tries the pump fake. Shot is blocked by Dwayne Bryant. Barnes wanted a foul, didn't get it. And the Hoyas. Win at 93-91, 26 straight now for the Hoyas at the Cap Center. Providence has lost nine straight there. Tillman with 39, and Alonzo Mourning had 23. Number one, Syracuse trailing at home at halftime to Villanova, 39-31. to Number two, Kansas playing the Winthrop uh, Eagles and having a tough time leading by five points early on. At halftime, Minnesota over number four, Illinois, 42-31. The Gophers always tough at Williams Arena. Number seven, Missouri, beating Oklahoma State in the Big Eight, 78-68. Nathan Bunton had 25. Doug Smith, the other forward, had 18. UNLV, the game just ended. The Runner Rebels beat San Jose State by 20, 100-80. Number 11, LSU, all over Auburn, 77-70 on the road, 25 points for Chris Jackson. 58-51, now it's 65-54, rather. Georgia Tech in the second half over Wake Forest on the road. 
Duke with a victory over Virginia in the ACC, a la Abdel Nabi, 16 points, including a couple free throws to ice it down the stretch. Arkansas, number 14, Hogs on the road over Texas Tech, 92-75. St. John's over Boston College, 42-29. The Redmen on top and at halftime of that one. North Carolina State, big effort from Rodney Monroe. He had 33 points, 20 of them in the first half as Jim Valvano's team holds on on the road. Arizona and Washington State, 77-53 as the Wildcats are opening that one up in the second half. Ohio State against Iowa, and on the road, the Buckeyes have a two-point lead at halftime. Memphis State over Virginia Tech in the early going by five points in that one. And number 22, Alabama, leading by seven over Mississippi in the first half. Our game, Loyola Marymount, has a lead over LaSalle. We'll continue with more from our halftime studios in just a minute. The Amico Pure Lead Free 3, ultimate silver and regular. You expect more from Amico and you get it. And now at Jace's Amico, you get even more. A new owner and new management dedicated to keeping the price down. Amico, the Pure Lead Free 3 for your car and Jace's Amico for competitive price. Drive in today. Fill her up with Amico at Jace's. Your car will know the difference. And if price means something to you, you'll know the difference too. Jace's Amico. Check it out. Your car knows and so will you. Uncompromising quality. It is the most important ingredient in a valuable gemstone. At Earth's Corner Jewelers, this quality is our reputation earned by the jewelry we create and the service we offer our customers. With two jewelers on the premises, repairs are completed quickly and at a much lower cost to you. And with our selection and prices of gemstones, especially diamonds, there's no need to head to Sansom Street anymore. Earth's Corner Jewelers, now at two convenient locations, the Valley Forge Mall, Phoenixville, and Audubon Village Shopping Center, Audubon. For those considering a Toyota Camry, some revealing news. There's another five-passenger sedan with front-wheel drive, fuel-injected engine, roomier trunk, and it's $1,200 less than the Toyota Camry. In fact, this German-engineered 1990 Volkswagen Jetta GL, including its new features, costs less than last year. So stop tearing your hair out about new car prices. It's time to think about Volkswagen again. When David and Lisa Edmondson needed life insurance, they came to see me. I'm Kent Spearman, their State Farm agent. I help the Edmondsons put together a life insurance plan that works for them and their budget. And I stay in touch as their needs grow and change because that plan has to work for their children, Rachel and Travis, too. If you want life insurance that works for you, get an agent who works for you. Get yourself a State Farm agent. And like a good neighbor, State Farm is ESPN's Big Monday of college basketball premieres Monday with a triple header in the Big East. Number three, Georgetown, undefeated against Pitt, 7.30 Eastern time, followed by Bobby Knight's Hoosiers of Indiana against arch rival Michigan. A bonus game, midnight Eastern, number 10, UNLV against New Mexico State. It'll be a big season of Big Mondays beginning on Monday, 7.30 Eastern time. We're set for the second half back in Philadelphia. Let's go back and see if the Explorers have explored a way to come back. Back to Sean and Larry in the Civic Center. Thank you very much, Chris Fowler, and welcome back, everybody, to the Philadelphia Civic Center. Our score at halftime, Loyola Marymount 59 and LaSalle 55. We've been talking throughout the telecast already about the great rivalries between the players on these two teams that date back to their youth, particularly in high school. The 1985 Philadelphia Public League Championship came down to South Philadelphia, led by Lionel Simmons, who you just saw, and Hank Gathers and Dobbins Tech. It was Gathers and his mates who had cut down the net as Dobbins Tech won the 1985 Public League Philadelphia City Championship. It's our pleasure to be joined now by the coaches of those teams back then, to my immediate right, coaching South Philadelphia at the time, Mitch Schneider. And Larry, you have the pleasure of talking with Rick Yankowitz, who back then was the winning coach. Right, you're still at Dobbins Tech. You had two great players in Bo Kimball and Hank Gathers. How much have they changed from high school to college? Well, basically, uh, Bo was a natural. He was like uh, Roy Hobbs of basketball. Everything he tried to do, he did well. Uh, he was an excellent shooter. He was an excellent rebounder. Uh, in fact, in the Public League Championship, in fact, the four games of the playoffs, he shot 51 for 65. How about Gathers? All right, Gathers was different. He came into Dobbins. He looked like a scripto pencil without the lid. He was really thin. He wasn't even a starter in 10th grade. And he developed himself between his sophomore and junior years 
working on the weights, running, because he was determined, and he became an excellent ball player. He had two great players. Yes, sir. Absolutely. Coach Schneider, you're now retired, and it must have been a wonderful way to go into retirement, coaching a player and a person like Lionel Simmons. It was. It was an honor and a privilege, and I can reflect back on it as being one of the highlights of my life. Working with that young man was just something that is, I wish that every coach could have that opportunity, because he's such a tremendous young person. How, if at all, has this game improved? I've seen him extend his range. He's also using more of his right hand. When he was a high school player, he was shooting a jump shot with almost two hands. Uh, today, he's gotten bigger, he's gotten stronger, and, of course, his jump shot has improved both in range and in technique, which is a credit to his college coaches. Gentlemen, thanks to both of you. Happy New Year. Thank you. And the same. We'll have first-half highlights when we come back and look at the first-half statistics as well. Our score at the half, Loyola Marymount 59 and LaSalle 55. For those considering a Toyota Camry, some revealing news. There's another five-passenger sedan with front-wheel drive, fuel-injected engine, roomier trunk, and it's $1,200 less than the Toyota Camry. In fact, this German-engineered 1990 Volkswagen Jetta GL, including its new features, costs less than last year. So stop tearing your hair out about new car prices. It's time to think about Volkswagen again. You know the sinking feeling of a dead battery. Stay in the car. Now there's the revolutionary Die Hard Dual Start. It's two Die Hard batteries in one. A simple twist taps its built-in spare Die Hard so you're not left stranded. Mom, you fixed it. It's cutting-edge technology, and it's Die Hard. Die Hard Dual Start. More power when you need it most. Life's full of simple pleasures, like the comfort of Levi's jeans, or had you forgotten? I mean, what do I need a computer for? I'm not an accountant. Then why should I be the company guinea pig? Why do I need one now? I've done fine without one. Can you imagine me working on a computer? Macintosh has the power to change your mind about computers. The power to be your best. So I was wrong. ESPN's NCAA Basketball, Loyola Marymount at LaSalle, is brought to you by Volkswagen, honest value, German engineering. It's time to think about Volkswagen again. By Nike, who reminds you to just do it. And by Budweiser, Beachwood Age, that clean, crisp taste. This Bud's for you. John McDonough with Larry Conley back at the Philadelphia Civic Center in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. At halftime, it's Loyola Marymount with a four-point lead and with a decided edge in field goal shooting. That's been the bugaboo for LaSalle all season long. Yeah, they haven't been about 40% all year long, at least on an average. You can see Loyola Marymount at 58%. Free throws, 5 of 10, 8 of 11. A lot of rebounds in that first half. And in fact, Lionel Simmons had 13 rebounds, half of LaSalle's total. You see the turnovers right there, an awful lot for this type of game. Three-point shooting. Well, the Mary Marymount 6 of 14 and only 5 of 19 for LaSalle. Individual scores gathers with 16. Kimball and Fryer had 11. Kimball managed to pick up 11 points by the very slow start. And Lionel Simmons leads LaSalle. Jack Hurd also at 13 for the Explorers. Pass underneath, went off the leg of Lionel Simmons, and the ball will stay with LMU. And LaSalle opens in the zone defense. It looks like a 2-3. Let's see how the Lions attack it. They'll attack it quickly, whatever it will be. Starting lineup is out there for Loyola. Missed by Kimball. Rebound went off Steamer. It's 
Faber up front with Gathers and Kimball. Walker and Pryor in the backcourt for Loyola. Press immediately by Loyola Marymount. Sal breaks it again. And a layup put home by Overton. It's also the five that started the game for LaSalle with the exception of Holland. He's in the middle instead of Lieber. A three-pointer and by Kimball. He's incredible. Yes, he is the nation's leading scorer, and he does shoot a lot of three-point goals. But he does a lot of other things with this team, like steal the ball right there. Gathers. What a great drive. Between the legs, dribble, took it in the lane, one-handed shot, soft touch, and it fell. How many shots in that menu? I don't think we've seen them all yet. Simmons was fouled by Steamer. Paul Westhead with a look of disbelief. Paul Westhead, a Philadelphia native, coached here many years ago in LaSalle for nine seasons. Said he has not been in this building since he was a young boy of the Philadelphia Warriors. Welcome well, back, Paul. I'm not sure where the faculty is in that group. Because <laughs> Paul Westhead is a faculty member. At Simmons just missed the whole basket. He never even touched the net. Did I say he was tired? He might be. Although he had to break at halftime. I mean, he's been in the locker room getting his, br his breath. Uh, he shot that one completely short. Got that one to roll in. Six-point lead for Loyola Marymount. Fryer for two. Eight-point lead. You better be ready to retreat and get on your heels and start playing some defense after you get a shot made on the other end because they're going to come at you. So will the sound. Overton the bucket. That's a travel. Gathers is trying to pass it off. The ball got caught up on his hip. I'm not sure why Gathers is handling the basketball anyway on this press. They ought to be giving the ball up to somebody else. Watch it again now. Backside. This time Loyola Marymount goes out of that press and they go strictly to a man-to-man -man defense. Turnover? No. Goes back to LaSalle. Oh, it is going the other way. Two officials looked at each other for a moment. Six-point game just underway in the second half. Fryer wide open for three. Somebody's got to get him. He'll get cranked up, and he'll nail about seven or eight in a row. He may miss seven or eight in a row, but when he's hot, you've got to find him defensively and find him quickly. He led the nation in three-pointers made last year with 128. Rebound Walker. Kimball changed the shot in midair and missed. Holland the outlet to Hurd. Nice All pass by Hurd. Overton the layup. Overton the steal. And the layup over Steven. Overton says, I like this. Give it to me some more. Walker, Pryor, again alone for three. That was a long three. That was an NBA three. Pryor, Woods. LaSalle back at Loyola's pace. An offensive foul called against Randy Woods. How you doing, pal? Got your breath? <laughs> Players aren't the only ones who are going to need oxygen. Let's talk about the three-point shooting for Loyola Marymount. Their season average is an eight made and almost 21 attempts. They've already made nine tonight on 17 attempts, so they're going to break their average. Give you an idea of how many three-point shots they like to take and the ones they like to make. And they're well on their way to the 100-point mark for the 10th time in 12 games this year. Fryer, that's a two-pointer. He missed it. Gathers. Took it into traffic and missed and heard the rebound. Lionel Simmons. Steamer made him stop. Simmons hit the shot. Nice turnaround move right there by Simmons. 72 66 Loyola. Gathers lost it in traffic. He shouldn't be handling the ball. Should be giving it up to the guards. Overton hits. And here comes LaSalle. Lowry. Throw it away. LaSalle gets the basketball, trailing by only four now. You know, I had a scout tell me one time that basketball is a game of runs. Right now, LaSalle's in the midst of a big run. Randy Woods didn't get the finger roll, but Holland hits it in. Lowry. 
inside to Gathers. Holland guarding Gathers. Gathers likes that shot, and that's why. You know, he's deadly with that shot, right in the front. Six to eight feet out. If he gets that dribble and gets that little pro hop, he can get it up, get it in. Sevens. Didn't get it. Heard, had a finger on the rebound. Lowry wound up with it. Four-point Loyola lead. Fryer trying to make it seven. Way off. The bucket and the foul. <laughs> Look at that. Doug Overton grabbed him and said, hey, pal, that was a great shot. But you got to remember, they played together in high school. Played together and spent all summer working out. They get up early in the morning. Exercise. Do between 500 and 1,000 jump shots every day. Kimball and Overton are their best of friends. I like what Kimball told him this past summer. He says, I'm going to lead the nation in scoring. Mm -hmm. Overton says, I don't believe you. He says, well, watch. Watch and see. I'd say that's a pretty good average. Fifteen <laughs> fifty-two to play in the second half. It's Loyola by seven. While some regard driving as a necessity, Volkswagen believes driving can be more exciting. Get your motor running. Introducing Corrado. Get out on the highway. It's time to think about Volkswagen again. knows football. Bo knows baseball. Bo knows basketball, too. Bo knows tennis? No. Bo knows weights. Bo, you don't know diddly. The crowd here at the Philadelphia Civic Center buzzing as Philadelphia's own Villanova Wildcats at the Carrier Dome in Syracuse have a 13-point lead over the number one team in the country in the second half. Philadelphia teams have done pretty well this week, huh? Indeed they have. With the left hander. It's a five point Loyola lead. Lowry to P. Body nearly stolen. Now O'Connell didn't get the bounce. Lowry was fouled as he went up. You know, again, you think about the way you handle a basketball team like Loyola Marymount. You make a basket, you don't have time to celebrate. I mean, you've got to turn around and get back and get on defense. Because that man right there is going to run the ball right back at you like he just did. Lowry gets a chance to go to the line for two. Yeah, I like this young man. I think he's a good player. He's only a sophomore. He's 6'2". He has scored in double figures in the first 10 games off of the bench. He's averaging almost six and a half assists a game. I tell you what, when you got three guys to throw it to, like the three he's got to throw it to, you're going to get some assists. Oh, it's a 78-72 lead, and the shot was short from Johnson. Holland, he's been a standout off the bench for Steve Morris. On Holland, big, strong offensive rebound. Kimball, three. Seven point lead for Loyola Marymount. We played just about five minutes in the second half. Simmons underneath. Holland short with a shot. Here they come. Three again. Lowry missed it. Heard nearly had it knocked away. All alone, Holland. He was fouled. 
by Peabody, who hustled all the way. It looked like an easy breakaway slam dunk or layup for Holland. But Peabody hustled back, and now Holland will have to earn the two at the free throw line. I'll tell you what makes this significant is the fact that he was not charged with an intentional foul. He hustled, got to the other end. He denied an easy layup, an easy two, and he's going to make Holland walk to the line and make two free throws. Nice job, good hustle. Could be a big basket. Although well, there will be a lot more scored after that. Ron Holland, number 51. Ron Holland came in to this ball game four of seven from the free throw line for the season. He's already achieved his season high. That's his ninth point, his previous high six points in LaSalle's last game against Temple. It's a nice ball game tonight. Off the bench, playing been. very well. As has Jack Hurd. I think LaSalle is proving that its 8-0 record is no fluke. They've defeated some very solid teams to build up that 8-0 record. Among them, DePaul, Villanova, Ohio State, Florida, Temple, Fresno State, Southwest Missouri State. Foul away from the ball, and I believe it's going against Terrell Lowry. Yeah, Lowry got into a shoving match with Randy Woods. Most of those situations, the guy that does it first, he doesn't get caught. It's the guy that does it second that gets caught. At that time, Lowry got caught. He'll go Lieber's back into the game. Now trying to cut into a six-point deficit. It's 81-75, Loyola Marymount. Johnson tried to cut it in half. He was way off. Simmons, strong move, and was fouled before the shot. Well, that's a strong rebound down inside by Lionel Simmons. He had three jerseys around him from Loyola. Minnesota beating Illinois. Had a few upsets this week, huh? Loyola working on Syracuse. Minnesota working on Illinois right now. Cincinnati got Louisville the other night. Woods wide open, missed the three. Those are the shots the South has to make. Uncontested three-pointers. Steamer, Peabody, baseline drive, nice. great pass. Oh, what a look. What a look. Oh, Kimball really starting to pile up the points now. 24 for Kimball. Line drive shot wouldn't go for Overton. Steamer the rebound. Everybody's open. And he missed. That foul's going against Lowry as he came over the top of Milko Lieber. Yeah, I look out here at this Loyola Mary Mountain Bucks. They're not even breathing hard. They really aren't. Good press by Loyola. Good pass by Simmons. Shot was altered. Woods missed it. Lowry nearly lost it. Overton wraps it up. Nice play by Overton. Good defensive work. He kind of got involved in the backside that time, and Overton tied him up in there, and a good job. Terrell Lowry a little bit lax. He got rid of the ball a little bit quicker. Possession arrow gives it to LaSalle. The Explorers trail by eight. Look about LaSalle averaging 64 shots a game tonight. They've already taken 71. We've got over 13 minutes left to play. That's what they do to you. They'll lull you into this type of game. Loyola Marymount will. Simmons missed the baseline jumper again short. And again, the legs are not there. Not getting the shot up over the rim. No bucket. He traveled. Great block underneath. Gathers hit Chris Knight, but he took an extra step. Paul Westhead says he'd like his team to get up at least 90 shots a game, preferably 100. Lowry and Kimball are going to take a break right now. No, wait a minute, Kim. Yeah, Kimball's out. They almost shoved him back out on the floor. Good thing they didn't. Johnson, three. That's a three point pass to Miles Sallis, number 20. Sal hanging tough. That foul will be on Woods. He was riding Walker from the midcourt line all the way to the foul line extended and finally got called for the foul. 
You know, I asked Paul Westhead when I was out doing the Oklahoma game about what the improvement was in his club this year. And he really gave the credit to Terrell Lowry and Tony Walker, who's really handled the basketball very well for them. That time the steal was by Johnson. Simmons, Maul. Chris Knight, what a good foul. Again, Simmons will have to go to the free throw line to earn two points. Third foul on Chris Knight. And this is third personal foul, team six. Bo Kimball, number 30. Returns. Knight started the two ball games that Gather sat up. Kimball's back in. Knight goes out with his three fouls. This is Chris Knight. Final Simmons, number 22, to be for sure. University yeah, he has two Lionel Simmons of LaSalle has a chance to make it a three-point game again. And Loyola Marymount's used nine players tonight. And again, Simmons misses the whole basket. He's not even close. Last time he missed badly, he missed the second one, made the second one as he did this time. Walker guarded by Woods. Now Kimball with Simmons right in his shirt. Steamer from behind the basket didn't get the bounce. Kept in by Gathers. 12-15 to play. Loyola Marymount by four. What a launch by Kimball. That was from more than 20 feet. Well more than 20 yeah. feet. That was from two feet. Slam dunk for Lionel Simmons. And Speedy Morris' club now trails only by two. Flyer had it batted. Gathers stripped of the basketball by Overton. Has Johnson in the clear. Lays it in. Tie ball game. 83 apiece. Flyer underneath. Gathers missed the reverse layup. Kimball put it home. Oh, what a flurry. Oh. 85-83. Still 11 and a half minutes to play. Simmons down the lane, contact blocks the call. Steamer picks up the foul. His fourth. Simmons bending over right at the top of the circle right there, grabbing his pants. I think he's a tired young man. He has put in a tough night on the board, running the break, done a little bit of everything for LaSalle. Lionel needs a breather. Tough to give him one with a well, ball game such as it is, but he's really gasping for air as he walks around back of the foul line. You know, he's played all but six minutes this year of the games and the minutes that are available to play. He's played in all but six minutes. I, that's an Iron Man to be able to do that. But certainly not at this pace. Most of their games have been half court games. Again, he missed the first, made the second. 11.26 to play. LaSalle has cut the lead to one. It began as a game. It turned into a battle. And now, it's out of control. Coming January 28th. This time, it's war. I love what you do for me, Toyota. I love how you set me free, Toyota. I love it, love it. I just love it, love it. Toyota's 1994 x 4 Park it anywhere. I love what you do for me, Toyota. Perfection, where there's nothing new under the sun, but under the ground. This valley is one long smorgasbord. Kevin Bacon, Tremors, rated PG-13. Starts Friday, January 19th at theaters everywhere. Purina Cacho. Cho, cho, cho. Purina Cacho. Still going. Nothing outlasts the Energizer. They keep going and going and... 
There's a couple of guys wearing Christmas sweaters representing the NBA. Billy Cunningham on your right right there with the Miami Heat and the director of scouting for the NBA, Marty Blake on his left. Let's take a look and see what they're here to see. The shooting right here by Bo Kimball. He throws one up, misses. Now watch the ball go to the other end and watch Lionel Simmons. Overton picks it up. A little behind the back pass. Great pass. Simmons with a jam. That's why there are about 20 clubs represented here from the NBA to watch that kind of play. Well, I'll tell you what, I've got a good, I've got a feeling that all these guys are going to go in the first round. All three of them. The question is whether they're going to be lottery picks or not. John O'Connell hits. Three point lead for Loyola Marymount. 11 minutes to play. Johnson ties it up. They've been waiting for Bobby Johnson to hit the three pointers. He came into this game hitting 21% from three point land. Flyer the miss from three. Gathers too strong with the putback. Weavers outlet. Johnson had it picked off. Then lost by Walker. Picked up over 10. Didn't get the bounce. Walker the boy. Fryer for three. Got it. Unbelievable. I mean, it is truly not to be believed. LaSalle is not good. Good pass by Simmons. Levers, tough shot, didn't get it. They couldn't convert the fine pass from Simmons. Strong drive, and the basket counts for Tony Walker. Shot up convinced, they're tired. They had three guys back on that defense that time, and he just split the middle and went right to it. They didn't have a chance to recover. Speedy Morris has got to be really concerned about this. Look at this score. How about this? Number one's about to go down. And Minnesota leading Illinois. That one not as much of a surprise, obviously. Clem Haskins has a fine club, and they're playing on their home floor in Minneapolis. Tony Walker, just a 56% free throw shooter. Levers the rebound. Having trouble getting rid of it. Over 10. Underneath for Simmons. The foul and the basket pass. All West had saying, be patient, be patient. I don't think that's in his vocabulary. Speedy Morris showing uh, Loyola Marymount they can run that same type of basketball game. They've been going up and down the floor pretty well tonight and with some effectiveness. Lionel Simmons with the three-point play. It's a two-point lead for Loyola Marymount. 92-90. Still 9.50 to play. Free ball. Simmons picked it up after Gathers lost it. Taken away by Walker. The crowd was yelling at Simmons. They saw Walker coming. Simmons did it. Gathers the layup. Oh, what a great catch by Gathers. He got it swept away and got it back. 22 for Gathers. Six of those in the second half. 94-90, Loyola Marymount. 9.20 to play. Sean McDonough with Larry Conley. Delighted to have you with us for this most entertaining game. Heard, missed the three. Fryer moved around over to him. Offensive foul called against Fryer as Heard moved in. How about the move by Heard? He takes the shot, misses it, gets it to the other end to draw the charge. Pretty good hustle. <laughs> Overton nearly had it batted away by Fryer. Look at they just swipe at the ball. Simmons for two. Gathers was fouled. Speedy Morris is off his bench yelling, he walked, he walked, he walked. And that's exactly what he said right then. pretty well in this basketball game. Larry mentioned earlier, 
Gathers has struggled with his free throw shooting. Missed them both. Steal by Lowry on the outlet by Simmons. Simmons bats it away. Fryer got it back. Kimball fakes the three. In the traffic. Gathers underneath. Gets the bucket and a foul on Overton. An agonizing sequence for Speedy Morris. Every time it seems his team will get a possession with a chance to tie or take the lead. They give it back. And Loyola capitalizes. John, what you've got to be careful about in this kind of game, if you're on the floor, there are always people swiping at the basketball. So you've got to be able to move quickly, be definitive about what you're going to do with the basketball, either get the shot or make the crisp pass because somebody's going to deflect it or somebody's going to come from behind and slap it away. Gathers. Yeah, 0 for 5 from the line, 0 for 6. Simmons had it knocked away, tracked it down to the corner. I think if I were him, I'd go back to the right hand. Maybe try underhand. A la uh, man who used to play in this building, Will Chamberlain. Lionel Simmons for two. It makes it a two-point game. 31 points for Lionel Simmons. Three points for Gerald Lowry. Heard nearly lost it on the spin dribble. 8-10 to play, 99-94 Loyola. I think we're on our way to 100, do you think? I'd say that's a safe bet. Levers. Heard. Underneath. Great pass to Levers. Good job by Jack Heard to look underneath and find him wide open. Lowry carrying. Good call by the official Jim Green. 7.45 to play. A timeout so both sides can administer oxygen and we'll be back in just a moment. What's so special? They build a store around it. Honey Baked Ham. Honey Baked Brand Ham has the taste you'll never forget. Plan your next meeting or party with Honey Baked Ham. No matter what size nibbler or party tray, they can do it. Featuring the three and six foot Honey Baked Ham Hoagie. The delis are fully stocked with oven roasted and smoked turkey breasts. Barbecued spare ribs, bacon, salads, and more. Tantalizing mustard, sauces, and gourmet preserves are always available. Remember, Honey Baked Ham in the Northtown Plaza. Hamtastic. Now you boys be good while Mom and I go buy a new car at Carfagna, okay? Are you buying a car for my daddy? We just browsing. I like the red one. May I help you boys? How much for a red car? Give him a good deal. For you two boys, two lollipops. Buying a car from Carfagno is as easy as taking candy from a baby. ESPN gives you a spectacular courtside view of ACC and Big East basketball, slam jammed with color and excitement. Check out the sparkling sights and sounds of the electrifying shootouts all season long. What a pass! I'm out! Get a T.O., baby! Go get him, big fella! Rock and roll! It's party time now! St. John's and Syracuse battle under the dome. Then North Carolina faces Maryland on ACC Big East Wednesday, live on ESPN. Let me explain to you what we're going to do right here. Loyola Marymount possession. From the time the ball hits the hands of the guy receiving the pass to the time they release it, let's see how long it takes. Let's roll it. One second. Two. Three point three. From the time it was inbounded to the time the shot was released. What's the average time of possession? Here it is. Nine seconds for Loyola Marymount and ten seconds for LaSalle. A tip of the cap to our stat crew, keeping track of all of these things. Johnson shot, batted around, Heard came away with it. Peabody tried to steal and didn't. Over 10, ties it up. 99 apiece with 7.25 left. Gathers nearly threw it away. Lowry saved it. Steamer, Kimball. Knocked away by Simmons, Levers with it. LaSalle can take the lead for the first time in the second half. Home defense now by Loyola Marymount. Well, we got a foul. 
I'm not sure if we're going to see a foul call. I think we're just having a warning. Well, I'll tell you what, that's a bad time to do that because there was a shot in the air when he blew the whistle to stop play. I believe it was Kimball and Johnson who were separated. John, that's all right to do. I don't disagree with the philosophy to stop it and get it cleaned up, but you're not going to do that with a shot in the air. the score. 6.50 to play, over 10. And LaSalle has the lead for the first time in the second half. Good one-on-one -on -one move by Overton. Steamer will take that. Peabody didn't get the three, Overton the rebound. This sellout crowd of more than 10,000, many of them on their feet, enjoying every minute of it. A 100 point mark, a good omen for the Explorers under Speedy Morris. Try to go to 10 and 0 when they reach the century mark. Simmons missed, Peabody the rebound. Lowry passed it off in traffic. The Lions will keep it. Lowry didn't have the right numbers that time. It was a three on three break and trying to force it. Get it back to the outer, sent Kimball to the corner. LaSalle leads by two. 6-10 to play. Peabody ties it up. Well, he just loaded in there. Nobody there to guard him. Both clubs are one on one. Both clubs over 100 with six minutes to play. They're gonna pull it out now. They're gonna run some clock. Rats just trying to catch their breath. This is what St. Joe's did throughout the game Thursday night against Loyola Marymount. Kept it close throughout. That went out off Steamer. Kurt shot with an air ball, but it went out off Steamer. Great job by Leverhurst inside that time to screen off Steamer to the ball. That's a guy from the Netherlands keeping a guy from sweeping away from him. That's the third time tonight LaSalle has scored right under the bucket off the inbounds pass. Simmons with the two from Hurd. Kimball, running shot. He got fouled, didn't get the shot before. This crowd has been frantic in here tonight. I mean, absolutely the bordering on insanity. I mean, they've just been crazy. This is a great arena, too. You can see the stage at one end here in the Philadelphia Civic Center. As we mentioned earlier, this the one-time home of the old Philadelphia Warriors. And LaSalle's playing all of its home games in this building for the first time. They have an arrangement with the city of Philadelphia. Great building. They refurbished it, fixed it up. Nice crowd tonight. Good place for LaSalle to play. Mm -hmm. And I think these people will come back to watch the Explorers again based on tonight's performance. Tied at 103. Johnson for three. Tangling after the bucket. Again, the officials have to step in and separate them. Well, Lee Hurst, right that time, got into it with Steamer again. Standing ovation from the 10,000 plus for the LaSalle Explorers. They lead by three. Just more than five minutes to Look play. Look at Campbell. Oh, what a move by Simmons. Sal with the ball with a one-point lead after the bucket by Kimball. Third for three. The Explorers are on fire. They have been doing it on adrenaline. LaSalle showing Loyal and Marymount they can shoot those three-point shots, too. Kimball again on sevens. Fryer got the two. Oh, what a nice kiss on the glass. Steal inside. Walker off to Kimball, and he was fouled by Hurd as he went up. Syracuse a bit closer than they were moments ago, but it's still the Wildcats by 10. Perhaps Stevie Thompson's regretting his statement earlier this week that the Orangemen could easily go through the season undefeated. There's another team in Orange in trouble. Illinois down by 20 to Minnesota. The ranks of the unbeaten dwindling. LaSalle, one of seven unbeaten teams in Division I coming into tonight. 
I'm not sure there's anybody out there that's as good as Georgetown right now, Sean. They're playing about as well. I know they've had a soft schedule in December. That has been fairly soft. Being a but Syracuse alum, it pains me to agree with you, but I have to. <laughs> I'll tell you what, Kansas is not far behind. Mm -hmm. Maybe not nearly as much talent, but a real good team that plays very well together. Outstanding coaching job by Roy Williams. Simmons rejected by Gathers. Coach will end the referee. He slipped and fell and lost his shoe. The two teams have finally succeeded now in running the officials right out of their shoes. Jim Green fell down trying to make the call and his shoe came flying off. Now he's got to put it back on. I don't know if I've ever seen an official come out of his shoe. I'll tell you, he's going to have to get those shoes retread after this game. That was a late whistle and it came from the outside official and Paul Westhead is upset about it. Speedy Morris, on the other hand, is complaining that it should have been a goaltending call. What it is is a foul. The game's still tied at 109. And Paul Westhead upset about the late whistle. Lionel with 32 points. Approaching his career high. He missed it again. He shot the first shot and missed the basket for the third time tonight. I didn't understand that. He missed that one, but at least he got the iron. Simmons' career high 38 points against South Carolina last year. Still tied at 109. Walker. Oh, what a move by Walker. How about the cut down the lane? He and Lowry in particular for Loyola take the ball to the hole with authority. Every you know, time. Well, what, what happens as a result of that is the defense has to converge on them, and then it opens it up for those other guys. That ball oh, almost went in. It did almost go in. Overton was fouled as he tried to pass off. Two-point lead for the Lions of LMU with 346 remaining. Fouls on Tony Walker, his second. Again, Speedy Morris pulls all of the explorers away from the lane as Doug Overton. They have to tie it up. They are now non-explorers away from the lane, right? They're exploring the backcourt. Speedy very relaxed tonight. No tie, no suit, no sport coat, just a nice white sweater. A little upset with his team's lack of success from the free throw line. Overton one out of two. Westhead's team leads by one. dominated the latest light-duty truck customer satisfaction ratings, some people weren't at all surprised. How does 4Runner rate in customer satisfaction? Toyota's number one. Toyota vans? Number one. Toyota Land Cruiser? Number one. Toyota pickups? Number one. Proving what we do for you, we do better than anyone else. I love what you do for me, Toyota. Today, more people than ever are getting a kick out of this hot shot. Interstate batteries hit the road fast with all the cranking power and reserve energy you need for even the worst curves in the weather. And Interstate has twice as many dealers than any other battery company in America, so you're never left stranded. For an Interstate battery dealer near you, all you got to do is call 1 800 crank it. Get the power that goes on and on and on, yeah. We go above and beyond just like you, above and beyond what we have to do. I'm a Prudential representative, and I help people review their life insurance needs because I know how much the right life insurance means to me and my family. You take pride in your life, so do we. Going above and beyond is our policy, the rock, the Prudential above. In Minneapolis, Minnesota is just finishing off Illinois. Not a big upset, but the margin is a bit surprising. Let's go to Williams Arena now for the final few seconds. Dan Roan and Dick Martin. For Minnesota, number four, Nate Cubs. He plays a junior grade. 
Welcome to Minneapolis, Minnesota. Dick Martin along with Dan Rowan, and we're about to see the number four ranked team in the country, the University of Illinois, go down on the feet to the Minnesota Gophers, who were ranked 24th, and Tim Gears from Illinois just canned a free throw there, but the Gophers have led throughout. They led by 11 at the half, and they're going to win it here big on their home court. Four seconds in the game as Gears misses that free throw and a breakaway, a last second shot by the Gophers. And the final score from Minneapolis is the Gophers have defeated the Fighting Illini 91 to 74, handing the university their first loss of the season. Dan, it was an exciting game for Minnesota, no question about it. They came to play, they did just that. Well, the crowd got into it early, Dick, and these guys really put on a show for the with Rowan and Martin calling it, it should be a laugher. 91-74, Minnesota goes to 10 and one. The Illini first loss, they fall to 11 and one. Let's go back to Philadelphia, Sean and Larry for the conclusion. Welcome back everybody to the Philadelphia Civic Center. While you were away, Jeff Fryer hit a three point shot for Loyola Marymount. He made one, left handed, he did. What, first one in six? One for seven now. One for seven. From the line for Hank Gathers, and that's a big hit from the free throw line. As the lead is back to five, and it stays at five. Three minutes to play. Hey, maybe he could be the one of those like switch hitters in baseball. You know, left-handed one time, right-handed the next time. Why not? The current technique isn't working very well. Trying to get it into Simmons, but he was surrounded. Heard missed the three. Big rebound for Walker. Five-point lead and the ball for Loyola Marymount with 2.33 to play. They don't even take their time looking for a shot with a five-point lead and two and a half to play. They still tried to attack. The turnover came back to the foul, and the foul's on Walker, his third. Well, they tried to push it inside the Kimball, and he had to give it up. He got it slapped away because he got surrounded by a lot of gold jerseys in there. Now Loyola Marymount turns it back over. LaSalle says, we will not talk about it. Both sides over the limit. 2.25 to play. Loyola Marymount, 115. LaSalle, 110. One, two, a one, two, three, four. Give me a break. Many men have sensitive skin that's irritated by shaving. After Aftershave Skin Conditioner is clinically proven to soothe and relieve razor scraped skin. Sensible care for sensitive skin. After. By Mammon. It's ever so tough being ranked number one and not being ranked. What assists me is the maximum protection an aromatically airy sense of right guard sports stick from Gillette. Anything less would be uncivilized. Many men have sensitive skin that's irritated by shaving. After Aftershave Skin Conditioner is clinically proven to soothe and relieve razor scraped skin. Sensible care for sensitive skin. After. By Mammon. With 2.25 to play, Loyola Marymount leads LaSalle by five. The Explorers have free throws upcoming. After this timeout, LaSalle down to two timeouts remaining. Loyola still has four. Turnovers in this game, 30 committed by LMU. Lionel Simmons and LaSalle have turned it over 18 times, so they've been better with the basketball, but it's still Hank Gathers and the Lions with a five-point lead. Well, it's interesting because Loyola Marymount has averaged 19 turnovers a game this year, so they're well over their average, and they've been forcing 23 turnovers a game. Overton, the free-throw shooter. Line drives the first one home. Overton, one of the best at the line for the Sal at 81%. Makes two big ones, and it's a three-point game. Block call, good call. Woods was riding Walker. And Tony Walker walks to the free throw line. Pretty good guy to foul on the stretch if you're going to the opposing team because he's only shooting 56%. And the Carrier Dome still a 16-point lead for Villanova over Syracuse, and that has to be heading toward the end of the basketball game. 
be a shot for a lot of orange men up there. And perhaps a good thing, as we mentioned, the orange men earlier this week, particularly Stevie Thompson, making statements in USA Today that the orange men could easily go undefeated. It doesn't appear as though that's going to happen. You be careful about what you say. A lot yes, of teams indeed. laying in wait. The orange men barely squeaked by Pitt earlier this week on ESPN by two points. Four-point game with 2.10 to play. Johnson, line drive to three-pointer home. He's in a few of those tonight. One-point lead for the Lions. Two minutes to play. What's this, a slowdown for LMU? No way. Great pass, charge, good call. Good move by Simmons to get in position. Walker charged. You know, there, if there's one criticism in this style of play that I think you can really bring up is the fact that you get a little bit out of control. I mean, you do play with a, uh, with, without abandonment. You just simply go up and down the floor. You're going to try to get as much as you can out of it. And oftentimes you're out of control just that time the way Walker was going into Simmons. Four fouls on Walker. As you know, if you've been with us, Simmons has had trouble with the first free throw all night long. Has to get the first one to get the second one as this is a one and one didn't get it. Still a one-point lead for Loyola. Walker off the steamer. Now gathers. Kimball's trying to post Simmons up underneath. They are really getting after each other. Pushing and shoving. The official underneath has his eye right on that. Nice pass. Good cut and a good pass by Hank gathers, he saw Kimball rolling down the lane. He put Simmons on his hip, went inside, and the foul had to come for the help. Fouls on Overton. And that's five fouls on Doug Overton. So a big part of this LaSalle lineup is forced to leave. They've used only seven players tonight talking about these scores. Now they'll likely bring Hurd back in and put him in a guard spot. Really puts them at a distinct disadvantage. Loyola Marymount much quicker now in the lineup. Over to now the lineup really hurts the South, as you said. And Kimball, one of the best free throw shooters in the nation, came in at 92%. Overton leads with 22 points, 10 assists, 7 steals. Kimball gets the first one to give Paul Westhead's team a two-point lead. One shot, one shot. It's something for him to come into Philadelphia, knock off St. Joe's and LaSalle back in his hometown of Philadelphia. He's a minute 30 away from doing it. If the Lions can protect a three-point lead with a minute 28 left. Timeout called by Steve Morris and the LaSalle Explorers. We've talked a lot about Loyola Marymount. They want to get the shot off in two seconds. A lot of times they don't care if the opponent scores. Some people don't think that that's basketball. Even Speedy Morris sort of shrugged and said he wasn't sure if it was basketball when he asked him about Loyola style. What do you think about it? Well, you know, it, there, there are a lot of different ways to approach the game. We talked about this in the first half. A lot of guys who like to play this style of play have fun with it, and they give the fans a lot of enjoyment. I happen to think I personally like a little strategy in the basketball game. I, I like for the players to exhibit their, their abilities, but more than that, I think it's important that we be able to allow the coaches to be able to go out there and coach the game. The way that they do it, Paul Westhead's group, obviously they do coach it, but it's a different tempo. It's all over the Carrier Dome. The number one team in the nation will be number one no longer when the polls come out at the start of the week as Villanova pulls, up, pulls off the upset in Syracuse. Started the night with seven unbeaten teams, Syracuse and LaSalle, two of them. Now we're down to six undefeated teams, and Loyola's trying to make that five. LaSalle down to its last timeout. Loyola's backing that pressure down a little bit. They're up by three. If they were able to get the basketball here, they may want to think about holding the ball for 45 seconds. Three-point lead for Loyola Marymount. They went inside. Holland was fouled. 
And LaSalle got a little bit lucky. Simmons lost the handle, but the ball wound up with Bron Holland. And he goes to the line for two shots. Bo Kimball the foul, his second. Bron Holland, number 51, the three point shooter for the South University Explorers. Holland's got a chance now to bring him within one. We would have missed these. I've got to believe Paul Westhead will pull that ball out and hold it. Cool under pressure. A career high 11 points for Bron Holland, the transfer from St. Bonaventure. Didn't get the second. It's a two point lead for Loyola. They call timeout with a minute 14 left. Loyola very good calls. And that might be what they're talking about. Perhaps now is the time, although it pains Paul West to do it, to take some time off the clock. Sean, I want to continue on that discussion we were having about coaching and the way you take players and, and teach them in college. Now, obviously, a lot of fans out there who are watching this game tonight, a lot of people around the country who are watching this, enjoy this style of play because you get to see the players really get their abilities on the floor. But the other part of it is I think it really helps the coaches to be able to take the game and dictate the way it's to be played. Paul Westhead wants it one way. Tonight, Speedy Morris has adopted the game that Loyola Marymount wants to play. Now, there are other coaches around the country who like to play a slower game and obviously control the game a lot more. A lot of people think this is more like pro basketball. I want to tell you something. This is faster than pro basketball. Oh, sure These guys go up and down the floor, and they score with a lot more frequency than the pro basketball people do. And Paul Westhead says that's the reason why Loyola plays the way that they do with his professional background with the Lakers and Bulls. He believes in a running fast break style. More great college basketball later on tonight at midnight Eastern time as Utah takes on Hawaii. We have Hawaii type weather today here in Philadelphia. Pleasant surprise. When Absolutely it's incredible. Degrees. It was wonderful. Beautiful weather. All for us. A minute 14 to go. A two point lead for Loyola Marymount, and they have the ball. And of course, nice too, the weather for the fellas from Los Angeles. They're trying to go back to LA with two wins over St. Joe's and LaSalle. What a terrible turnover. Gavels went inside to Kimball and off his hands and out of bounds. Well, that was a bullet pass, and when you're just six feet away from a guy, you don't throw him a bullet pass. Hard to hand out, hard to hold on to that. Kimball lost it out of bounds. Less than a minute to play now. LaSalle with the ball trailing by two. Simmons, strong, and a strong rebound by Gathers. Yeah, they got to think about holding them now. They've just got about a three or four second differential. Randy Wolf took a look and he says, I got to. .8 seconds remain. Uh, yeah, but you got to be very careful. I mean, you don't want to lose him in case you go into overtime. If you do, you're in big trouble because he has no one else to put out there at that guard position with any experience. Terrell Lowry. It's a three-point lead. And here's the biggest free throw of the night to this point. I would have to say the Philadelphia young men have acquitted themselves very well here tonight, wouldn't you? Indeed they have. Big miss. With a three, LaSalle can tie. Timeout called. Heard had given up his dribble in the backcourt. That's the last timeout for LaSalle. They are out of timeouts. With 34.2 seconds left, Loyola Marymount leads by three. And both sides have had three big misses from the free throw line. Sean, you know, both of these clubs are getting ready to step into conference play, and in college basketball, uh, January really marks the beginning of conference play. I really basically think there are three seasons in college basketball. December is to find out what kind of team you've got. You make your decision about who you want to play that's not in your conference. You play softies or you play tough clubs. You play on the road. You make that decision on your own. Then when January and February come, you go back into your conference to find out exactly what you're made of in tough places on the road when you've got hostile crowds. Then March is tournament time. LaSalle looking for a three-point goal out of this timeout in all likelihood, trailing by three with 34 seconds left. And they obviously have not done well from that range. 
Their shooting, as Coach Morris said, has been lousy. That was his word. All year long, 40% for the year, but 8-0 and coming into tonight. They are walking that tightrope again, not shooting well, but trying to pull out another ball game at the wire. Well, it's, deci it's decision time now. I mean, they've got to make a decision who they're going to go to. They can't go to Simmons because he's basically the inside player. They need a three right here. The guy that's got to do that, I would think, would, uh, would have to be Randy Woods. And he's only shooting 32% and 36% from the field. Although I will say Johnson's had a pretty good night. They could go to Johnson. He's had a good night from three-point range. 30 seconds to play. Loyola Marymount by three. Holland, not a three-point shooter. I think it's going to be Bob Johnson. He's going to take it. Yes, he is. In and out. Simmons kept it alive, but the ball wound up with Lowry. 15 seconds left. Peabody hangs on to it. Kemble gathers. Fouled. No basket. He was fouled on the drive. No, they give him the basket. Whoa! You know what? I was about to say, I thought maybe he was heading up when he did get fouled. The two officials conferred. Two officials blew the whistle simultaneously. And they do give Gathers the bucket. They haven't put it up on the board yet. They still haven't put it on the board. But the official did indicate it's good. And now Gathers pointing into the stands at his family as his teammates celebrate. And Paul Westhead wants a timeout. You know, I'm not sure they gave him credit for that basket. I thought that the official also indicated that he was going to count it and then they didn't put it on the board. The official walked over the table and gave the basket is good indication. But it looks like another free throw is going to be shot, so there's no Absolutely. way. So they, that's right. They, they gave him the free throw. Yeah. I was with you. I looked at the official and I he saw the same thing. Gave yeah. the so to sort it out, it was not a hook, but the first free throw is good, and it's a four-point lead for Loyola Marymount with ten and a half seconds left. Big Monday premieres here on ESPN this Monday at 7.30, a Big East battle between number three, Georgetown, number three at the moment, but with Syracuse losing tonight, look for them to move up. Then Michigan and Indiana. That'll be a good one. Indiana got upset this week, too. Ohio State. And another top ten team, UNLV, taking on a very talented New Mexico State team. We saw New Mexico State earlier this year on ESPN upset New Mexico in Albuquerque. Neil McCarthy has an outstanding team. Gathers makes, makes this one right here. Then they're in great shape because they got to come back and get two scores to beat Loyola Marymount. I'm not sure that's going to happen. And LaSalle has no timeout, so if they come down and score, they can't stop the clock. If they don't score Just take it out of bounds very quickly, it. Loyola can hold the ball out of bounds, and I'm sure Paul Westhead drove that point home. If there's one time he wouldn't mind his team hanging out of the ball. Pretty good night. 26 points, 12 rebounds. And he made both of them. Stay with the left-hander. Don't worry about us. Have to shoot it. Woods didn't get the three. Loyola Marymount is going to win the ball game. Heard missed the three. And LaSalle falls from the ranks of the unbeaten. Paul Westhead returns home to his native Philadelphia and defeats St. Joe's and LaSalle. And the Lions of Loyola Marymount are now 9-3 on the season. What a ball game, Larry. Great ball game. And Congratulations to Paul Westhead to be able to come back to Philadelphia and walk away with a pair of wins in some pretty hostile places to play. He wins at St. Joe, and he wins here tonight at the uh, Civic Center. Great game. The final score, Loyola Marymount 121 and LaSalle 116. For Larry Conley, Sean McDonough saying so long from Philadelphia, here's Chris Fowler. Okay, thanks, fellas. So unbeaten LaSalle falls. There were six unbeaten teams coming in tonight, three lost. Number one, Syracuse, beaten in the Dome for the first time since 82 by Villanova. Greg Woodard had 27 points. Number 24, Minnesota, beating Illinois, previously unbeaten, behind 27 from Melvin Newberg. And Ohio State, Iowa not unbeaten, but another ranked team loses 79-73. The Buckeyes beating Indiana and Iowa within two days. Number six, Oklahoma, one of those three unbeaten teams left. They're getting a tough game from the Colorado Buffaloes. 
leading by two points at halftime. Georgetown and Kansas, the other two unbeaten teams. Reminder, midnight Eastern, Utah and Hawaii from Honolulu. That game follows SportsCenter, which comes up in about an hour and 15 minutes. Up next, uh, the uh, World Open Nine Ball Championships. Once again, Loyola Marymount beats LaSalle. I'll see you again at midnight Eastern for our second game. ESPN's NCAA Basketball, Loyola Marymount at LaSalle, has been brought to you by Energizer Batteries. Nothing outlasts the Energizer. And by the companies of the Prudential. Come to the Prudential and build your future on the rocks.